Hi folks, it's Sam here at Solo and I am super excited to give you this walkthrough demonstration of how to set up Solo Studio Pro with the MIDI cues to control QLab on your Mac device over network. So this is super exciting and a huge step forward for Solo Studio Pro, but like everything in Solo, it's pretty easy to set up. So in the next few minutes, we're gonna dive into it. But before we do, please make sure that your iPad or whatever device is running Solo Studio Pro and your Mac, whichever device is running QLab, are connected to the same network. Now, your Mac could be connected via Ethernet to your router or by wireless, and similarly, so could your iPad, but so long as they're both connected to the same network. That is crucial for this to work. Now, once you've done that, dive into the Solo Studio Pro app and make sure you have enabled MIDI cues and MIDI control. You'll find it in the upgrade marketplace. And if we dive in, I will show you very quickly. You go to the plus icon, you click upgrades and within here, show control and you can see the MIDI cue upgrade. Now, once the MIDI cue is there, you're going to want to go into settings and you're going to want to check that box that says enable MIDI service. If you don't do that, your Mac will not be able to detect the iPad. So make sure that is turned on. And then you can go back to the main screen, which as you can see, I set up a blank show ready to demo this for you. But let's dive into our Mac. So as you can see, you can see my Mac home screen here. The first thing we're gonna do is set up a MIDI device on your Mac. And this is super, super easy. Apple make it very simple. If you've not used the MIDI service before on a Mac, all you need to do is go to your launcher, find and type in MIDI, and you will find audio MIDI setup. Click that and this box will appear. And once it appears, you're gonna go into the top left and click window, show MIDI studio. And in true Apple fashion, another box will appear. And then on the right hand side, you're going to click the globe icon. This configures network MIDI devices. So we're gonna click that, and lo and behold, another box appears. But as you can see, the box is pretty blank. The only thing you can see inside sessions and directories is iPad, and guess what? That's the iPad, because you've just enabled that MIDI service inside Solo Studio Pro. So we need to create a session. So we're gonna click on here and click the plus icon. That creates a session, and we're gonna enable that session. Once we've enabled the session, we're going to click on iPad and then we're going to click connect. And as you can see, the iPad is brought into the participants of the network session. You don't need to touch any of these settings at all. They can all stay exactly as they are on port 5004. So just leave that. It can be running in the background and that keeps your iPad connected to your Mac and your Mac listening to the iPad signal over the network. So we're gonna dive into opening up an app that we can use to receive those MIDI signals. So I'm gonna use QLab. So we're gonna dive into the launch pad again, and I'm gonna type in QLab, and we're gonna launch QLab. And then once QLab's opened, I've got a demo workspace set up. If you're not familiar with QLab, have a play. I imagine you probably are though, which is why you're watching this video. So we're gonna open it up, and as you can see, I've got a couple of tracks in here, so it's a very, very simple QLab setup. But what's important to note is using these MIDI controls, you can play individual audio files, lighting effects, scenes, you could switch scenes, switch workspaces. There is so much you can do. But we're just gonna keep it simple for now and play with these two audio cues as well as a master panic. And the master panic is what we're gonna set up first. So to do that, what you have to do is in QLab, is head to File and Workspace Settings. When this opens, you're gonna click Controls and then the Workspace MIDI tab. And then we're gonna scroll down this list until you see Panic All. And as you can see at the moment, it's currently set to None. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a built-in feature of QLab to listen to MIDI signals and capture that data automatically so that we don't have to set it up manually. And this is really, really cool. So we're gonna literally click the capture button and then we're gonna switch back to our iPad. So as you can see in the iPad, we're gonna go and set up this panic all setting, which 
In Solo Studio Pro is our master fade out. In other words, it stops all playing cues. We're gonna head into the top left corner and click the settings icon. And now a brand new menu inside the latest update is the advanced settings, which can be found in the bottom right hand corner. Click that and this new advanced settings page will open. And the second option down on the left there under the master fade out panic settings is send MIDI on master fade out or panic. And we're going to enable it. And as you can see, it automatically populates a note for you. Now I've already set this up to be A and on octave one, 127 velocity and the channel. Now you can set these numbers individually however you'd like. However, we recommend keeping it simple using octave one, channel one and velocity at 127. For more advanced users, you will want to change these settings, but realistically for most people, you might only use a couple of octaves. Now, what is an octave? Well, an octave is a group of notes that you would find on a MIDI keyboard. So for example, these 10 notes from C all the way to A, and they're repeated nine, even 10 times. So you've got lots and lots of notes and octaves to play with in that whole range. And then the channels go from one to 16. So you, then you can multiply that by 16 and all of a sudden you can see that there's a huge number of individual MIDI signals we can send. But we're gonna leave it on A, octave one, channel one. Simple as that. So how do we send this signal to QLab? Well, all we need to do is press that test button in the bottom left. So to show you how that actually works, I'm gonna switch back to the desktop so you can actually see it in action. There we go. And I'm gonna press that test button you just saw on my iPad. And when I do, you can see that automatically we've populated that that signal was note on 33, 127, okay? Now that is that signal. You don't need to do anything else at this point. Just click done. And now, whenever we master fade out using Solo Studio Pro, we'll automatically send that MIDI command over the network to stop anything that could be playing in QLab as well. Some of you may want that feature, some of you may not, but that's why there's a toggle switch to control it nice and simply inside Solo Studio Pro. But let's dive into the actual cues themselves. How do we trigger a cue? Well, now we know how to stop it, let's start it. So we're gonna select the Baywatch theme here, why not? And I'm gonna go down to the bottom, and as you can see, there is a triggers tab here. I'm gonna click triggers, and there is a MIDI trigger. I'm going to select MIDI, and as you can see, it's listening for note on by default and any channel, but we wanna capture that MIDI signal. So again, I'm gonna click, click the capture button. And now the system is waiting for a MIDI signal to be heard over the network. So I'm gonna go back to the iPad and we're gonna exit all of those settings and we're gonna create a MIDI cue. So in the plus side here, we're gonna hit MIDI and a MIDI cue is automatically created we go into that MIDI settings, and now you can see that very familiar selection of a note, octave, velocity, and channel. And again, we're gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna leave it as what it's currently set up as. So it's the note C, it's the octave one, velocity 127, and channel one. And I'm just going to leave it at that because I don't need any more settings right now. And to obviously capture that, I can hit the test button again. So. I'm gonna go back to that main screen so you can see QLab in action, and you can see the little yellow text down there that says waiting for MIDI, and as soon as I hit that test button, it's captured. And as you can see, it's captured that we were firing on channel one, that the note was 24, and the velocity was 127. That is done. So now every time that MIDI cue is fired, it will trigger the Baywatch theme song in QLab on a device connected to your network which is crazy, and it does it all almost instantaneously. It's like one sixteenth of a second, it's crazy. But we wanna do it to a second tune as well, why not? So we're gonna to go to our second track, and as you can see, the triggers tab stays live, and we're gonna, on the iPad, we're going to create a second. So we're gonna create a second one. So we're gonna go into the plus, MIDI, and I'm gonna click, I'm just gonna change that to C sharp, and then octave one, 127. You know what, I'm gonna change the channel to channel two because I like being a bit of a renegade. So there we go, we've changed it. And you can see obviously in here, we're done. I'm gonna simply go back to our, um, our QLab and I'm gonna click capture. 
and we're waiting for that new signal to come in. So I'm gonna click the test button here. And as you can see, we've captured it on channel two. We've captured note 25, velocity 127. So that is now saved as well. Do make sure that you check the boxes to make sure that the MIDI triggers are active on your cues or else that MIDI trigger won't fire. So we're gonna go back. Yeah, we're selected there as well. Perfect, so we're pretty much good to go. So I'm gonna go back to the main home screen on my iPad, as you can see here. And I want you to listen to both of these at the same time so you can see what's happening here. So we're gonna to go to this and hopefully now you can see some chaos, which ultimately is my camera up here and we've got our view of my desktop and you can see what I'm doing on my iPad simultaneously. So quite simply, I'm gonna hit the first MIDI cue. And as you can see, that has started to play the Baywatch theme song. And it really is that, that quick. I'm gonna press the master fade out tab in Solo Studio Pro in the bottom left corner, that X. And when I do, as you can see, it panics all and it closes down the cues in QLab. If I hit MIDI two, we play the second track because that's what we set up. And then again, I'm gonna hit the panic all and it stops them playing. How crazy is that? So just within a few minutes, we've managed to set up a completely wireless setup that allows us to wireless, wirelessly send a MIDI signal from Solo Studio Pro, which of course can be triggered using objects to control QLab, one of the most sophisticated show control pieces of software and industry recognized software anywhere in the world. So this is pretty damn cool. And we're doing all of this over network. Now, there are a few other things that we need to dive into just very quickly. So if you wanna go ahead and start playing now, feel free, but we're just gonna talk about some of the extra settings inside the MIDI cues that you can play with. So inside MIDI, for example, here, you can see on the right-hand side, we have some of the familiar settings that you're used to in Solo Studio Pro, such as override, which obviously will stop all playing cues inside Solo Studio Pro when this MIDI cue fires. We have a delay, so you can set up a delay on that cue. So you might want to trigger it, but it starts something in QLab five or 10 seconds later. Then you've got the cue duration, which of course then allows us to set how long we want that cue to be active for. Now, it's worth noting here that the MIDI signal is actually sent instantaneously, but having a cue duration length for that MIDI signal or MIDI cue inside Solo Studio Pro will allow you to develop some more sophisticated routines and auto effects inside Solo Studio Pro itself. So it's a very useful feature. You can actually set the cue duration up to five minutes, which is huge. Uh, you may never use that, but it's there just in case you need it and you want to create some of those effects. And of course, underneath, we also have perfect timing, which will count you into the start of that MIDI cue firing, which again is awesome because it means now with precision, you know the exact moment that a cue will start in QLab, which is the first time ever anyone has been able to do that. So this is incredibly, incredibly exciting. As a solo performer, you can now pick up objects, make a gesture, and with absolute precision, know the exact moment a cue will fire in QLab, which is absolutely mind blowing. So next thing down from that, we've got auto play next cue. So this is how the automations work, right? So if my cue length is, uh, let's say two seconds, as you can see it is here, after two seconds and that cue finishes, we now auto play the next cue, which could be anything, a video, uh, it could be any other cue in Solo Studio Pro. So the world's your oyster there. And of course, you can also build the MIDI cues into groups. So you could group a video that plays and an output from HDMI from your iPad while simultaneously sending a MIDI command to your QLab running device to change your lights to change, to fire a smoke machine, to play another piece of music, who knows? You could do literally anything and this really does open up a whole world of possibilities. But I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough. I hope you found it useful. Thank you so much for tuning in and for watching and we really do hope that you enjoy and go wild creating some incredible things using this amazing MIDI over network.